Bonjour tout le monde and welcome to this speed paint slash commentary video. So today I want to talk about the process behind my painting that you're seeing on screen right now, right now in the sketching period. I'm watching the video as I'm recording this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about it, so let's get into that. This painting is a fan art for Le Rouge et le Noir, the musical, which I love a lot. Um, I also love the book Le Rouge et le Noir by Stendhal. Um, first time I read it was in German, then now I'm trying to read it in French again, even though, you know, my French is not that good yet, so uh, we need to improve that so we can read it in French. But I want to read it in the original language because usually that's what I like to do. If I read a book, I want to read it in the original language, be that German or English, Japanese, I guess, Russian, definitely. Um, so yeah, uh, I decided since the cast and the whole musical is going to China, they are in China right now as I'm recording this, um, having a little revival of the musical for their Chinese fans, which it's huge in China. I was surprised about that, but then again, I guess, I don't know, Chinese people, very cultured, of course, um, and they really like European culture, I think. I don't know. I, I think they have some like interest in European culture, Japanese as well. I've noticed that before with like, uh, Le Roi Soleil is also a French musical and a Japanese cast redid it, the whole thing like just with women and i've seen some photos of that on the internet before so yeah very interesting they're in china right now and i wanted to do something to contribute to that whole affair in china because i really like them and i wanted to do something for the entire cast you know i've done fan art for Kong before of course as you know if you watch my youtube channel actively um but I haven't done fan art for anybody else and I just wanted to do something for the entire musical, basically. So as you can see, there's a lot of detailed stuff going on. Um, the painting is realism, I guess you would call it. And realism is something that I don't usually do, right? Like, I'm somebody who likes surrealism and abstract stuff or just like simpler stuff sometimes as well but never really realism that's not some I, I always say like ah uh, why would i do that you know you can take photos and stuff but in this case i really thought it was fitting for the subject matter because le rouge de noir the book is realism you know like the literary period and everything and also i thought it was a good thing to challenge myself uh, to do realism like this because let me tell you this piece was challenging it's huge as you can see probably from the beginning it has nine people plus napoleon in it <laughs> uh, i don't really count him as a full person because it's just a portrait of him but you know it's 10 people kind of 10 faces anyway which you know i've never done that before i usually paint like one person in uh, one piece or maybe two you know it doesn't get much wilder than that usually but here we have nine people plus napoleon so the biggest difficulty was obviously to put all nine people into one painting and make it look uh, good, <laughs> I guess. So um, surprisingly, I found my way pretty quickly. You know, I did a sketch on paper where I tried out where to put all the people. I did some minor changes from the first sketch, but I had a feeling for the painting pretty quickly. Um, I wasn't sure about the aspect ratio because I do prefer portrait aspect ratio but it's really difficult in my opinion to put nine people in portrait aspect ratio with having it be somewhat logical that they could actually be in the space together. You know, if it was more surrealist, of course I could put nine people in a portrait aspect ratio, but in real life that's kind of difficult without them like laying on top of each other or some crazy shit like that. So, uh, you know, we have this aspect ratio which is not portrait it's very close to square but it's not square either you know you know what it is landscape i guess um yeah which not my favorite but in this case i think it worked out pretty well i knew yeah sitting on a couch so some could sit behind some could sit on the couch and some could stand behind and everything i thought that would make sense um and i think it does i think the end product it does make sense composition wise uh that was a big issue i guess the difficulty the first difficulty i had to overcome so the second difficulty was actually um, not painting related 
as much as others difficulties in this process but it was still one that i had to deal with uh, which was who was actually in the cast in china i knew the original cast but i also knew that it, they had changed you know not everybody was returning and in the beginning you might have seen in the sketch that there are two people in the sketch who are not in the end product that is because I was informed or I found out that they were actually not in the cast. But I thought previously that they were. I did a lot of research, you know, I went to a lot of research. I went to their Instagram pages and looked who posted about <laughs> that they're going to be in Le Rouge de Noir. Some people didn't have Instagram pages. Um, most of them do, but not everyone does. Um, I think Philip Escond, however you pronounce his last name, I'm sorry. He has Facebook and he posted it there, which, you know, I'm not on Facebook, but I found it through Google, so that's good. Um, and I also went on Chinese websites because, you know, they're going to China. So I tried, you know, with Google Translate and stuff like that to search in Chinese who's coming to China. And they didn't know either, so I didn't really... I, I mean, they knew some, but those were already the ones that I also knew, so I didn't get much information there. So I figured everyone out except for the Marquis. De la Mole, right? No idea who he was. I, I was thinking, yeah, maybe um, the old actor is gonna reprise his role, but I wasn't sure. So I just turned and asked, the, which I could have done in the beginning, I guess, but I didn't want to ask for all of the people because that would have been kind of like annoying, probably. So I just asked Elsa Pelosi. I'm sorry, with the last names, I can't, I don't speak French. Leave me alone, okay? Uh, so I asked Elsa, who plays. The Marquis this time, I asked if it's going to be the old actor reprising his role or not. And she said, no, it's actually so-and-so. Um, and I was very happy with that. Big thanks. So I knew who to paint later on. We're not on that part yet. We're currently painting the beautiful Mathilde, um, who's played by Juliette Béard. Or however you pronounce it. Like, just a disclaimer. I don't know how to pronounce things in general. Much less when they're French. So then, the second difficulty or the third i guess was finding decent reference pictures F some people have a lot of pictures online from a lot of different angles and that's beautiful and i can use that and i'm very thankful for that um some people has have less pictures of themselves online which you know fair but then my um i don't really have that much to choose from and i do need s certain positions for their faces to be in you know you can't change the way that what they're looking at with their pupils, of course, but uh, their faces also have to be directed in a certain position, I find. So it was kind of difficult to find good reference pictures, uh, especially with the lighting. So I did make some mistakes with that because, you know, I wanted, I was thinking about the lighting beforehand. I wanted the lighting to come from the left and I did realize pretty early on that I couldn't slash wouldn't want to do very heavy lighting because you know heavy lighting is dramatic and nice and i personally enjoy it very much but i was going for a more like neutral vibe you know like it doesn't have to be so dramatic and also with the lighting provided in the pictures none none of them had extremely heavy lighting like especially the women which i mean i understand um they don't want that many shadows on their face in their pictures that they post online i get that i guess um so i didn't really have that many to choose from that had heavy shadows even though you know as artists i guess we love heavy shadows but in this case there wasn't that plenty of them available so um one mistake that i made was for madame de redal who's played by lovely halen um she, i chose a picture she has many pictures of herself i could have chosen a different one but i didn't because i didn't think about it because i started with her so i guess i didn't think about it that much so I chose a picture of her where the lighting came from the exact opposite side than it would be in the painting. So I had to think uh, <laughs> and re-engineer the lighting in the picture and that was not the most easy thing to do. Um, for Geronimo, I actually had a similar issue. I found such a good picture that fits so well, you know, a reference picture, but the lighting was coming from the exact opposite side and I didn't, I wasn't able to find any picture where the lighting did come from the correct side. So I just decided, oh, okay, there is a secondary light source over there. So, you know, whatever, there's a secondary light source. Let's just not make it such a big deal. 
so on him only basically there's a secondary light source every source everywhere else the uh, light is coming from the left uh, but for him it's coming from the right so right now we're painting comb um that's nice he's in the middle so let's talk about the composition a bit more you know now that we've gone through our difficulties and stuff so composition um I was thinking, how do I place these characters, right? Le Rouge Le Noir characters. Um, it's a bit difficult, a bit different, I mean, from the book, the kind of characters that I placed into this painting and how. Like, for example, I wouldn't have placed Geronimo into the painting if I was painting from the book because he's, like, not that prevalent of a character in the book. Also, I wouldn't have put Madame de Vano in the painting, but I would have probably put... Um, Madame de Renal's friend into the painting. I do think I forgot her name right now, but whatever. You know, because those two characters, her friend and Madame de Bonneau, are kind of merged into one in the musical. Or Madame de Bonneau is given a more prominent role anyway, because in the book she isn't that important. So yeah, I would have done that differently if it wasn't for the musical, but for the book. But it is as it is. So I was thinking, I'll put Julien Sora in the middle, of course, because he's our protagonist, as Stendhal calls him, our hero. Um, and I decided that he and Napoleon, because Napoleon is a painting, would be the only ones looking straight at the camera. Everyone else would be looking at somebody else. So of course, I put Madame de Renard right next to him, holding his hand, because hand-holding is a very important part of the Rouge de Noir, the book, definitely, I mean, how much they talk about handholding in the first books, very in, de in detail, you know. So they, they got a whole hand, so that, that was clear from the beginning, and they are next to each other, because I kind of put the characters in a way that it reflects their relationships to each other, um, logically. So I wanted Madame de Renard to be close to Julien, sitting on the same couch as him, <laughs> the same couch, the same level of the couch, as you might notice, every, a couple of people are sitting on the couch, but only two of them actually on the cushion part, you know? So, um, they're close to each other because they have a lot of influence on each other, they're very close to each other, she's looking at him, he's looking at the camera. Behind Madame de Renal is her husband, Monsieur de Renal, uh, and he has his hand on her shoulder, but he's, you know, he's behind the couch, the canapé, whatever. Uh, so there's kind of a barrier between them because their relationship is not as intimate as the relationship between, for example, Madame de Renat and Julien Sorel. Um, but he still has that influence over her, which is why he has his hand on her shoulder. If we're talking about hands, you might direct your attention. I know you, you can't right now because we're watching the speed paint, but, you know, in the final image, I guess. You might direct your attention to another hand that's near Madame de Renal's um, shoulders, which is Monsieur de Valno's hand, actually. He's reaching around his missus and kind of, you know, his fingers kind of going towards her because we all know he has an uh, attraction towards her, even though it's unrequited, but it is still there, so I wanted to portray that in a sense. Madame de Valno herself is sat on the armrest of the couch, uh, looking facing with her body away from the whole entire cast and towards her husband, but her gaze is directed back at Julien and or Madame de Renal herself. So she's observing the relationship and kind of keeping an eye on that and communicating with her husband on how to best manipulate the whole situation, perhaps? Yes, they're definitely in conversation, the two of them, with their hands. You know, she has her hand placed on his chest. By the way, I added some gold chains to Monsieur de Vano, which you'll see in a second here in the speed paint. Because in the book it was mentioned that he wears like gold chains and stuff, and I thought that was kind of neat, so I wanted to paint that. Um, they're communicating with each other, he's looking at her, you know, they're just kind of scheming as they do. Um, so back to Julien, in the middle we see on his shoulder I've placed a hand as well, that is Mathilde's hand. Um, and she is sitting on the backrest of the couch, actually. Also she has a book in hand, like Julien himself because she likes to read. In the book, you might notice that there's words written there, and it's not actually just scribbles, because I was like, oh damn, I think I gotta actually write words in here, because it's such a big piece that you can zoom in, and you can see the words. If they're not words, you would notice. So I wrote 
the lyrics for Quelle uh, Nuit, which is her character introduction song, the first song of the second act, into the book. And I also put a little illustration because it was difficult because of the perspective of the page, it would have been very difficult to write the text. So I decided to just not do that on the second page. Because, you know, if there's an easy way out, you should probably take it. Um, yeah, right. So she has her hand on his shoulder and she's looking at him as well. But she's like kind of, you know, she's on a different level than Madame de Renal. She's She has a different kind of influence on Julien. And she herself is more proactive than Madame de Renal. So that's why I try to display her in a more um, flippant, maybe, pose. Uh, and with more of a proactive pose as well. You know what I mean. Um, the Marquis de Renal... No, the Marquis de la Mole. Oh god, th those names. So many names, I'm sorry. So the Marquis de la Mole is standing right beside his daughter and behind Julien. So I was thinking about putting him like on the right of Mathilde, but then I decided to put him on the left of Mathilde instead. Oh god, we're running out of time. <laughs> I thought I was gonna... Okay, whatever. Um, but I put him behind Julien because in the book, at least... I don't know. In the show, it isn't communicated that well, I think. But in the book, at least, he has a very huge influence on Julien and his life as well. See, if I was painting the book, I would have also added Abbe Pirat probably somewhere in this painting. So yeah, he's standing behind Julien. You know, you know. So Eliza is the maid. <laughs> she, she's at... She's at the bottom right corner of the painting. And she's looking up at Julien, kind of longingly, you know, because she wanted a relationship with him, but that never came to fruition at all. And she's very close to him as well. She has a lot of influence on his life. She's holding this little letter addressed to Valno because, you know, guess who's a little snitch? No, no offense, of course. So uh, she had a huge influence on his life, but less so by impacting him directly and more so doing it indirectly. Uh, right next to Julien so that we have this portrait of Napoleon, which I decided to add into this whole thing because Napoleon actually has the biggest influence to Julien Sorel's life, even though they don't talk, <laughs> obviously. He's not in the picture, actually. That's why he's a painting. So he's like exactly right next to his heart and has the most influence on that because he tries to live his life a certain way, guided by the um, image of Napoleon, which is, doesn't really work out that well for him. He might have had a better life if he didn't do that. So, well, but that is how it is. Geronimo is on the side, kind of far away from Julien, because I don't think he has direct influence. He's the storyteller. That's also why he's looking off into space. All the other characters are looking at each other. But he's looking off into space. He's just telling the story, you know? So at the floor, uh, on the floor, um, I want to talk about the floor. The floor is marble. I wanted to make it wood at first, but then I changed my mind because marble looked better. Uh, and on the floor, we have a Bible to Julien's right foot and a rosary. And to his left foot, we have pages upon which he's written. Uh, it's actually the lyrics to, the, to La Gloire à mes genoux from the musical. Of course, I just decided everything that's written is gonna be something from the musical, because why not? So we kind of see the two sides to which he's pulled, though religion isn't really a side to which he's actually driven. It's more like a front that he puts up in order to fit in or make his luck, as he would like to say, I suppose. And there we go, the painting is complete. Yeah, in the background you can see we have some we have some like bar baroque themes. I like to call these the omniscient baroque curtains in the background. Those little red pieces of cloth hanging down and those cords. I, I wouldn't know how to call them. They I decided to add them there to give the whole painting a little bit of a baroque feel. We also have the wine glasses to the feet. By the way, there's a lot of feet in that one frame. Um, to the feet of Madame de Renal and Madame de Vano and Monsieur de Vano. There's the wine glasses because they're throwing dinner parties. That's kind of the whole theme. Also, spilled wine kind of looks like blood. Mm, yeah, so that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this painting process. I hope you have no questions about this piece anymore. I really thought I could um, fit all of this talk into these 20 minutes better, but you know. 
whatever. So, have a nice day. If you want the whole painting, like, if you want it in full resolution, you can tell me. I can send you a link. And you can download it. So yeah, I had a lot of fun painting this. And au revoir. Bye-bye.